Hello and welcome to Foreign Affairs Focus. I'm Jonathan Tepperman, Managing Editor of Foreign Affairs. Our guest today is Robert Bonner. Robert is the Senior Principal of the Sentinel Group. He's a former Commissioner of the U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency, and he's the author of several great articles for Foreign Affairs on the drug war in Mexico, the most recent of which was the cartel crackdown, winning the drug war, and rebuilding Mexico in the process. Uh, Rob, let's start by talking about the status of the drug war in Mexico today. You paint quite an optimistic picture in your piece on the progress that the Calderon administration has made, um, but there's been a recent upsurge in violence as we head into the election. So just quickly paint a picture for where things are today. Well, first of all, I think President Calderon, uh, being the first president of Mexico to actually take on these powerful drug cartels, these powerful criminal organizations that are based in Mexico, has made uh, a lot more progress than people give him credit for, both in the United States and even in, in Mexico. Uh, he has done a lot already to uh, reform uh, some of the major law enforcement institutions of Mexico, particularly the federal police of Mexico, so that it is now a professionalized law enforcement agencies and started making steps to reform other aspects of the criminal justice system. Uh, but he's also been successful in terms of, uh, uh, of uh, capturing or removing a large number of very major kingpins and cartel players and, and weakening the cartels. So he's made uh, some real progress, but he's obviously not going to be in a position to finish the job in his uh, last six months as the president. That's going to take the next president of Mexico to uh, carry on the policy to ultimately defeat these cartels and destroy these organizations. Well, let's talk about that. The election is um, about to happen. In fact, by the time this video comes out, it may have already happened. How do you rate the three candidates, and especially the, the, the likely f uh, front runner, um, uh, in terms of the, the likelihood that they'll continue uh, Calderon's work? Well, it's, it's very difficult to assess. First of all, the front runner is the PRI candidate, the party that ruled uh, Mexico in the presidency for 70 years until uh, 12 years ago when uh, Vincente Fox and the PAN party uh, won uh, the presidency. So for many years, the PRI ran things. And it does look very much in terms of every polling I've seen. And frankly, all of my friends down in Mexico for the last uh, two years have been telling me Peña Nieto is going to be the next president of Mexico. So if this errors and he isn't, I'm going to be uh, as surprised as everybody else. Um, but there are two other candidates in the race. But Peña Nieto, uh, what's surprising here is that the, I, I think the greatest challenge facing Mexico today, arguably, is the drug cartels and the threat that they pose to the legitimate institutions of the government of Mexico, both through bribery, through corruption, and violence, and all of that. Um, I don't know that there's been an upsurge of violence, uh, you know, in the run-up to the, the election, but there has been a very large amount of violence occurring in certain of the states of Mexico uh, over the last, even before Calderon, but uh, over the last five, six, seven years. And so you've had, uh, the reporting is, over 50,000 people have been killed in drug-related homicides in Mexico. Most of these are uh, members of one drug cartel attacking members of other cartels, but nonetheless, you've had a very large number of homicides. You've got a, a pretty serious, you have a very serious kidnapping problem. You have extortions by these uh, drug cartels, these criminal organizations and the like. So uh, you, you, the surprise really is how little uh, Peña Nieto or frankly the other candidates have actually said about this issue, the issue of the power of the drug cartels and, and defeating them. Uh, there has been a little bit of discussion about the levels of violence and how you might reduce that, and it's very excruciatingly vague right. what well, Pena-NATO might do. My impression is that because even a successful war on the cartels uh, creates a lot of violence. All three of the candidates want to run away, run away from the issue. Um, how worried are you about backsliding in the next administration and that the uh, accomplishments of the Calderon administration will be lost? Have they got, have, for example, has institutional reform gotten to a, a point where even if it's no longer supported, the successes will remain or could all the good work that's been done be for naught? Well, I wouldn't say I'm unconcerned about what might happen, particularly if the PRI returns to power, which appears to be likely, particularly given its history uh, of, uh, of a very cozy relationship, actually uh, a, a modus vivendi with uh, the major drug trafficking organizations. On the other hand, I don't think that's going to happen 
uh, under Peña Nieto. He, has, he himself has said that in the campaign, in the run-up to the elections, that he will not negotiate with the cartels. And he's vowed to continue the, the struggle. Now, he has suggested changes in the strategy that Calderon's employed in terms of uh, taking on and attacking the cartels and defeating them. But he has uh, at least said that he is going to continue the policy. And from all of my uh, friends and colleagues I've worked with over the years in Mexico, I mean, they have uh, essentially uh, every one of them has assured me that there will be no, as they put it, no U-turn mm -hmm. in the basic policy of Calderon, which is to not just attack, but to defeat and destroy, splinter, fragment, blow apart mm -hmm. these cartels so they're no longer a threat to the state. In terms of government reform and institutional reform, briefly, what are the next big steps that you're looking for Mexico to take? Well, the next big step beyond the federal police, and they've got to make sure that they pay attention to that too, by the way, and, and adopt the best uh, anti-corruption practices, uh, uh, strong internal affairs and the like. Uh, but beyond the federal police, the next step really is to reform the state police in Mexico. And the state police are uh, on an order of magnitude 10 times more state police than there are federal police. There's something like 350,000 state police in the 32 provinces of Mexico. So this is a huge challenge. It can be done. Basically what you do is you get rid of the, the bad and the corrupt people. Uh, you hire and train uh, professionals. You, to a certain extent, you may need to pay more money so that you're not having a force that's dependent upon graft, bribery, and so forth. But you professionalize it much in the same way that Mexico uh, under Calderon has built up and professionalized the federal police. Mm -hmm. And then beyond that, you have there's judicial reforms that have to be put into place uh, in Mexico that have been started, but they have a long way to go. And this is basically so you have a system that's capable in a non-corrupt manner and in a, a transparent manner of prosecuting and actually convicting uh, major drug traffickers. Until that happens, they'll have to continue, as they should, uh, to extradite uh, certainly the major traffickers to the United States for prosecution and conviction. And even the penal system needs to be reformed because uh, the fact is right now uh, it is possible for a major drug trafficker who is arrested in Mexico to continue to operate his enterprise and live um, I won't say in luxury, but uh, live pretty well inside a, an incarceration setting. And so they need to actually, uh, or escape from it, as is the, is the case of perhaps the most notorious of all of the cartel uh, kingpins, uh, Chapo Guzman, who heads up the Sinaloa cartel. I mean, literally was arrested, but was able to relatively easily, through some corruption, uh, escape from, uh, from prison. So all of those things need to be reformed. They're all in process in one degree or another and they need to be followed up on, uh, budgeted, uh, resourced, and uh, understood that these are ultimately important to defeating the cartels and establishing the rule of law and ending the era of impunity in Mexico, which I think is so vitally important to Mexico's future. One quick question. I know it's not a simple question. Um, what can Washington do to help? Well, Washington has been doing things both uh, under the previous administration and the Obama administration through the Merida Initiative to uh, help fund certain aspects of the professionalized training of uh, Mexican law enforcement. We can play and should play a big role in that. Uh, there, uh, there are uh, cooperative efforts uh, between uh, U.S. Uh, federal law, uh, law enforcement in particular and Mexican law enforcement that, by the way, are, have been better than ever, ever, I think, in terms of the ability to exchange information, get it acted on a, a, a level of trust with, uh, particularly with the uh, vetted units of the Mexican Federal Police and, uh, and the PGR uh, that, frankly, we hadn't seen before uh, going back 10, 15 years ago. So those efforts need to be continued. But we could, there's no question, I think the U.S. working with Mexico could do more could coordinate better uh, to be more effective uh, in the area uh, of law enforcement and in particular the staunching of the flow of drug money uh, that uh, supports the cartels. And uh, that's an area where both the U.S. can help. It's an area where I think the Mexicans need to get better, which is going after the assets of the major drug traffickers and uh, essentially confiscating them and forfeiting them. Rob, that's all we have time for. Thanks so much for talking to you us. You bet. Hey. Thank you.